Hi, my name is Davud Atrasamani. I am a PhD student in the University of Louisiana at Lafayette and I'm working in High Performance Cloud Computing Lab. I am presenting our paper, The Art of CPU Pinning, Evaluating and Improving the Performance of Virtualization and Containerization Platform. Chavit Deninard is my lab mate who, who helped me too much. And Joseph Baki, who is a software engineer in Facebook, helps us too much and answered too many questions of ours. And Professor Mohsen Amini Salehi, who is our advising professor, helps us to gather all of our data and make this paper. There are four execution platforms that we can run applications on top of them. The first one is bare metal, which actually has the best performance, but there is some consideration. For example, we are always worried about if that hardware is utilized enough. The next platform is called Container on top of bare metal or CN we call it in our paper. In this platform a container layer sits on top of a host operating system and applications are getting executed inside, inside of that container. The next execution platform is virtual machine or VM. So there is a hypervisor layer sitting on top of the hardware, then the guest operating system, and then application which is executed on top of that operating system. The last execution platform is container on top of a virtual machine, which we call it VMC in throughout our paper. In this platform, hypervisor sits on top of hardware, then guest operating system, then container layer on top of that, and then application gets executed inside of that container. So there are multiple options when we want to choose a platform to execute our applications. And the question is, which of, which of these platforms are better for our application? It is definitely related to the application type, which could be, for example, CPU intensive or IO intensive. So in our work, we are trying to find a trend for the overhead. We will use different execution platforms as we discussed before and we will run different workload patterns inside of them. And then we will increase compute resources to see how increasing the number of CPU cores, for example, impacts the overhead. We are also going to apply CPU pinning to see how it impacts the overhead for those execution platforms. Our motivation is in-depth study of container on top of virtual machines, which we call it VMCN, and then comparing different execution platforms all together with real-life applications that have different workload patterns, and finding an overhead trend by increasing resource configuration like CPU cores or RAM, and then involving CPU pinning in the evaluation. Our contribution is unveiling two parameters, PSO and CHR, and leveraging these two parameters to define overhead behavior pattern for different resource configuration and different workload types. At the end of the paper, we are going to offer a set of best practices for cloud solution architects. They give an idea of which execution platform suits what kind of workload. Let's compare virtual machines and containers. The left image shows a virtual machine in a KVM hypervisor. Chemo KVM emulates hardware devices. Libvirt is a library that helps external services to interact with Chemo KVM. Birch and Vert Manager are CLI and GUI interfaces interacting with Libvirt. From the right image, you can see Docker architecture. Docker D and Container D are two services that help creating and managing containers. They are actually interacting with Run C inside of the kernel of the host operating systems. And Run C manage namespace and C groups of those containers. As you can see from the right image, containers do not have their own operating system. They are actually sharing the host OS kernel. However, for the virtual machines, each VM has its own operating system.
So for example, in the KBM hypervisor, one can have Windows or Linux virtual machines together. Since containers do not have that additional operating system layer, they are much more lightweighted in comparing to virtual machines. There are two different approaches for provisioning CPUs in virtualized platforms. The first one is called time sharing. For example, in a Linux operating system, completely fair scheduler or CFS is used, which means all CPU cores are utilized even if there is only one VM in the host or the workload is not heavy. Each CPU quantum has different set of CPU cores. We call this mode vanilla mode in our study. In contrast to default approach, pink mode used a set of fixed CPU cores for all quantums. So it actually overrides default hypervisor or scheduler and process is distributed only among those design entered CPU. Our first experiment is about video processing workload using FFmpeg. So this application is widely used for video transcoding. It is very high processing demand, multi-threaded, but up to 16 cores. It has very small memory footprint and representative of a CPU intensive workload in our study. Our workload is actually running a codec change from H264 to H265 of a source video file with 30 megabyte HD video. Mean and confidence interval across 20 times of execution for each platform is collected. Figure 3 is showing the result of this experiment. There are 7 bars in each group. First we have bare metal, then pin container on top of bare metal, then vanilla container on top of bare metal, then we have pin container on top of virtual machines, which is called VMCN. Then we have vanilla VMCN, pin virtual machine, and vanilla virtual machine. So as we have expected, for VMCN, which has both of the virtualization layers, I mean container and virtualization, is observing too much overhead. However, this overhead increased throughout increasing the resources from large to 4x large. But there's some kind of overhead you can see from, for, for example, virtual machines to uh, bare metal. This kind of overhead is not vanishing. So there are two kinds of overheads actually that we are going to observe in other experiments as well. One of them vanishes through increasing resources and one of them doesn't. We are going to talk about this kind of overhead. The next experiment is about parallel processing workload using MPI. MPI is multi-threaded and its resource usage footprint highly depends on the MPI program. We use MPI search and prime MPI which are compute intensive but in terms of communication between CPU cores. We actually collected mean and confidence interval across 20 times of execution. Figure 4 depicts the result of this experiment. As you can see, wherever we use containers, it is observing much overhead, even comparing to virtual machines. We have well studied this kind of behavior in our paper. And in next slides, I will talk about this. Next experiment is about a web-based workload using WordPress. WordPress is a PHP-based CMS and it is actually an I.O. intensive application in terms of network and disk interrupts. For our workload, we actually set up a simple website and then we asked a user to browse that website. We recorded the user behavior using Apache JMeter and then we saved it to a user profile. By the use of Apache JMeter, we can run any amount of users browsing that website, which makes that workload. So our workload is running 1000 simultaneous of those users using Apache JMeter. We run each experiment six times and we collect mean execution time, which is the response time of all those web requests. And we collect mean execution time, which is response time of these web processes, 
The result is actually not we have expected. Vanilla container on top of vermetal, which we expected to have better performance in comparing to virtual machine, is showing the worst one. However, its behavior changes throughout different instance types. Next experiment is about no scale workload using Apache Cassandra. So Apache Cassandra is a distributed NoSQL database, which is high demanding of compute, memory, and disk I.O. Our workload consists of 1,000 operations within one second. We use Cassandra stress tool to impose that workload, and 25% of it is write, and 85% of it is read request. These 1,000 operations is coming from 100 threads, each one simulating one user. The same as other experiments, we are going to repeat it 20 times. Average execution time, which is response time for those 1000 database queries are recorded. The result of this experiment is very similar to WordPress. So as you can see in figure six, vanilla container on top of bare metal is observing too much overhead. It is about four to five times in comparing to bare metal but as you can see virtual machine are are actually the same as bare metal the same as before this behavior is going to change by increasing the number of CPU cores so by performing an overhead analysis across all of those applications we can categorize overhead into two forms platform type overhead which is due to resource abstraction for example for virtual machines it is constant and pinning is not helpful too much the other type of overhead is platform size overhead or pso which diminishes by increasing the number of cpu cores it is specific to containers and reported by ibm for docker there's a documentation page for tuning WebSphere on Docker. Pinning is considerably helpful for decreasing this kind of overhead. We can categorize pa parameters which affects PSO. First of them is the container resource usage tracking. C groups is the application that is in charge of resource usage tracking in Docker. Container to host core ratio, which we call it CHR, that is assigned cores to the container divided by total number of host cores. The third one is IO operations, and the fourth one is multitasking. In the conclusion, we can say that application characteristics is decisive on the imposed overhead. CPU pinning reduced the overhead for I.O. bound applications running on containers. CHR plays a significant role on the overhead of containers. Unlike what we expect, containers may sometimes induce higher overhead in comparing to virtual machines. And containers on top of VMs, which is called VMCN, impose a lower overhead for I.O. intensive applications. At the end, we offer a set of best practices. First one is avoid small vanilla containers. Make sure that you use pinning for CPU bound containers. It is not worthwhile to use pinning for CPU bound virtual machines. Use pinning for IO intensive workload. For CPU intensive application, use CHR between 0 0.07 and 0.14. For I.O. intensive application, CHR can be between 0.14 and 0.28. For ultra I.O. intensive applications, set CHR between 0.28 and 0.57 to have the best performance. Thank you for listening to my presentation.